is... Good morning, it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> uh-huh. What? You scared me the way that you said that. I'm like, maybe it's not Wednesday. I, I needed a minute to think about where am I in this calendar. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Don't ask me the date. It may be the 6th. It might be the 5th. I don't know. I think it's the 6th. It's, it's the 6th. Six. Six. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that may I be do the know six. that part. Yeah. Good morning. Good you're morning. What, yeah. And there's Colleen. Morning, Colleen. Nice to see you this morning. Hello. Okay, I am a little bit. There I am. I kind of moved our table Oops. back a little bit. Yeah. But good morning, everyone. Oh, it's good to be here. Good to be in God's <sighs> word. So to wake gorgeous. up. Literally, the, we, we get the watch. The sun come out it's somewhere true. behind those clouds. That's true. It's a beautiful way to start our day. Thanks for hanging it. with us. It's true. Hello. Mwah. Hello, Miss Mary. Thinking of you. Mm. Yes, good I've been morning. praying for Mary a lot as well. Yeah, so good. Powerful, powerful, beautiful people. Isn't that the truth? Jumping on right now, joining us in the Word and just having fun with our very fun God. He is a fun God. A very good God, a very dependable God. So good to see everyone. Hello, hello, good morning, good morning. Gosh, it's so good. It's weird. We have this like weird sense of peace. There's just like this, <laughs> there's this, this lovely lull oh, that we're all... What day is it? <laughs> yeah. Where are we? What time is it? Um, it feels good. It's true. I did want to just mention though that um, they're coming out, but um, so many of you were so kind to send us like a, you know, a Christmas card oh, or just goodness. a precious little, you know, thoughtful gift. And I just want you to know we, we received them, we got them. Um, we're working on just letting you know, getting, giving you something in return, letting you know our appreciation, which pales mm. in comparison to how it touched our heart when it arrived That's here to the right. barn. That's right. Um, we just were overwhelmed just by the simplest thing to the, you know, it just, every single one of them was just mm -hmm. so precious and beautiful and thoughtful and considerate. And, thank you. um, we're, I mean, I, I'm just, I was overwhelmed by it all. So thank you. Thank no. you. Thank you. And it then, never, ever goes, um, unseen. If it's a text message, if it's an instant message that we don't respond to anymore, but we do through e emailing, we see everything. Yeah. And Danelle, yeah. when Danelle gets stuff that we don't get, she makes sure we see those things yeah. as well. So nothing, nothing, nothing goes unnoticed. Um, we're just so, so grateful. Yeah. I interrupted. You were going to say one more thing. No, you, you, you didn't so interrupt So thank me. you. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> you spoke. See, this is the beautiful so thing about you. This is the beautiful thing about you and I. There is no such thing as interrupting because we finished each other's thoughts now. So in fact, <laughs> I like when you interrupt me because you say it that much better than I would I was just going to say that. I'm like, I actually like when you interrupt me. I'm not kidding. I'm like, because you have a thought that or the here's the thing what? and I and I don't even What's I can't even believe that we're talking about this right now this is so divine um, because I we weren't even intending that but um, Girl, but ever do we the back and right it's very spirit led and yeah. if you interrupt me I am like you what, you <laughs> say it because I, I need to hear what God has well that's to a say. good thing because I interrupt you a lot oh this is so funny that that topic came up um, so how do I get on email? So oh, anyway, that's a good so question. email us through barn45.org and you'll see all the different ways to contact us. It's just a nice one place to go. Um, but what you, what you were saying also was just how grateful we are for people thinking of us. Yeah. As well as we are getting um, thank yous from the people that have received our entire which need to go to you exactly <laughs> yes from the christmas um gift cards that y'all send money in for or prayers in for or just whatever for p up we're getting the thank you cards in and Stunning. i feel like i mean I'm it has just, nothing to do with us no mm -hmm. and i want to somehow share it but um so just know that they're we'll coming about in that. and they yeah that's a good idea we'll pray about how we can share we'll just right now tell you that those thank yous from the Christmas gift cards that we sent out to yeah. individuals or families, we were just the conduit. It wasn't us. It was yeah. all of us. And the thank yous are coming in. So just so you know, 
And they're not just Ooh, thank yous. They are delightful. Tear jerkers. They really are. So thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. One more thing crossed my mind, but I can't remember. I just, for some reason, it's on my heart driving here and right now um, that there might be some people that are on here for the very first time. Oh. And yeah. And Hello. even maybe your very first Bible study and you're like, well, mm. what is going on here? I just want to tell you, welcome. Just thank you for beginning your day here with That's us. Right. Or maybe it's the middle of the night for you or it's in the afternoon, whatever it might be. Um, and I do pray that you, um, whatever you're walking through, whatever you're yeah. Um, going through whatever you're experiencing because you are experiencing because we are living in this world mm -hmm. um, that this this word that that um, your father God wants to share with you um, touches the fragile places mm -hmm. of your heart in a way that it strengthens you mm -hmm. um, it feeds you it supplies you it nurtures you um, it touches you in a, in a way maybe that you've never experienced before in your entire life yeah. and so um, that's my prayer for, for not just the one that maybe just is new today or new yeah. to all this, but for you, for me, for, right. for all of us, right? right? This is, this is why we do this Bible study. Um, it's not, it, it's, it's to expose, um, God for who he is and to, um, spread his fame mm. and to, um, be reminded that he alone has the answers, mm. not a human being. We don't, Ooh, we don't have the so answers. Can you say that again? Right? Can you say that again? I do need to say it again because I need to tell myself that a lot. That's right. Because the enemy's, we've got, the enemy's like, oh, you got to have all the answers. And, and he does that with pastors. He does that with mamas. He does that with fathers. He does that with Amen. leaders. He's like, you got to have the answers. And if you don't have the answers, everyone that's following you is going to fall. And it's like, God's like, oh, child. <laughs> I am the only one with the answer. Yes. You are just supposed to be the one that's like the sign that's like this way. Yeah. <laughs> Go that way. Yes. You know? And um, what, a, what a beautiful thing as a counselor, as a teacher, as a leader, as a mama, as a parent, as a father, as, as a boss, as whatever. Whatever you do, whatever job title yeah. that God has allowed you to wear, we're just supposed to be mm -hmm. the sign, the roadmap to mm -hmm. who has the actual answer. That's right. So, today is a good, big roadmap sign pointing north. Yes. And as you were talking, people were saying, you're talking to me. So I assume they're okay, saying good. first time good. some, I, I missed some of the names like Gladys, I think was one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I missed it cause it was scrolling up kind of fast, but, okay. uh, third time, first time. Awesome. So awesome. Well, that's why God put it God, on my heart, put it on your heart. Yeah. 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 And that's been my prayer is that these, these, these verses, they just, Every one of them just tri Life changing. yeah they change us they they make mm -hmm. us think throughout the day they you know we marinate in these verses mm -hmm. and it's not something we just listen to and then we go through our day and just still live you know full of fear and full of anxiety and full of worry but we stop mm -hmm. in that and go no because my father told me this mm -hmm. morning that he's got this my father told me this morning that his arms are wrapped around me my father told me this morning that I'm anchored in his enoughness my father told me enough <laughs> told me this morning that he actually is enough That's right when you're gonna reject me and you're gonna leave me mm -hmm. and you're gonna label me no my father has already identified me as his own you know these are the type of things that we have to press that pause button we talk about so much at 3 mm -hmm. 30 in the afternoon when the enemy's just prowling around because we're getting tired Mm -hmm. You know, that coffee's worn out and, and he loves to like watch when you're really kind of just a little bit weary and a little bit hungry and a little mm -hmm. bit ornery and you know, that's when he's like, comes right in and that's when we have the ability now to go, no, 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 no. My father told me this yeah. and this is, this is what I'm going to believe. And then the more we do that consistently and persistently, the more that you're going to find that that just becomes your everyday life. And the enemy recognizes, he starts to see it. It's biblical. He actually says when mm -hmm. he sees that he can't mess with you in an area, he just, <laughs> he just right. stops messing with you That's in that right. area. So he still messes with me in certain areas. But let me tell you, there were so many areas he messed with me and he doesn't mess with me anymore in those particular mm -hmm. areas. Because mm -hmm. he's like, oh, I don't got a chance there. Nope, you don't have oh, a chance there. You get there. me on fire inside. I'm ready to start going after it. Let's go after it. We haven't Let's even prayed yet, and I just want to, like, I'm biting my tongue. Ooh, but it's so good. good. I mean, I love when we start off this way. It's just all him. Um, before we pray, I do want to add on that um, next week, there's a lot of really beautiful things happening. Mm. Um, as the conduit, the barn, barn 45 is a conduit. It's God's source yeah. um, to, it's, it's a vessel to work through uh, and have him shine. And so a couple things that are coming up, go to barn45.org to check this stuff out. But this was all his um, divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And we're just obediently saying yes to these things. So 
Um, you have, well, this Thursday, I have a digging deeper in, in this part of chapter two. Tomorrow. So that's tomorrow, apparently, because today is <laughs> Wednesday. So Tara, Just reminding that's you. tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we're going to be focusing on this week's scripture, mm -hmm. specifically verse 14. Uh, from yesterday, but it'll just continue to fly. It's awesome. So there will be a digging deeper in the afternoon as well as in the evening. Ooh. I really am trying to get back. I want to honor the evening folks who can't, who do listen to this after work or when they can. Mm -hmm. So I am going to try to provide some things that are um, in the evening. And then you have your Falling North Bible study mm -hmm. that is a Facebook Live. Yeah. So no one has to register to show up here starting next Monday. Show up right at wherever you're at. Grab your phone. Computer, time, I mean, I'm sorry. 6.30, Mondays mm -hmm. nights. And I know there's a number of you that are like, well, it's 3.30 my time, and I'm getting my kids from school. So yes, it's all recorded. You can watch it that's at any right. time. It could any be time. your 2.30 in the morning Bible study. Mm -hmm. So that's Monday. And then um, then that same week, and then we're going to get into this, but the same week is your Abundance Academy. The actual Abundance Academy that, that God's been talking about for a long time. and I'm Tuesday and Thursdays. <laughs> So is yes. there still availability in that? I it's think so. it's not yet, I don't think. I think okay. there's a, a few more spaces because I'm offering that. two. Yeah. So it left some more space. So yeah. anyway, check out barn45.org as we dig Ooh. deeper into scripture. Capital S source is what it's all about today. Ooh. Through me anyway, Love through it. my Bible Our, time with him. Yes, let's pray and let's yes. get into God's word. Thank you for joining us this morning. Get a cozy spot wherever you're at if you can. And uh, just, I was going to say bundle up, but let him bundle you up. <laughs> <laughs> and Tara would say buckle up. <laughs> buckle up. Buckle up. All right. Or so unbuckle. Let, or unbuckle, true. <laughs> just, just bear with us as we love the Lord in all different analogies and metaphors. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> so, Father, thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your tenderness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your healing hand that promises to guide us, promises to be on us. Uh, promises to provide for us, promises to feed us, promises to nurture us. Father, I thank you for that beautiful hand. And uh, Father, I pray this morning, that as, as always, that your word would become alive and active. Mm -hmm. It would pierce our heart. It would penetrate into the fragile and the tender places of our heart. Would you massage out our heart? We want a soft heart. We don't want a hard heart. A hard heart is easily broken and shattered because it's hard. But a soft heart, Lord God, it's flexible. And uh, you can work with it and you can mold it. And so, Father, we, we just pray for that, Lord God, that um, only you can, can take this hardened heart of ours, of mine, and breathe oxygen into it and start to massage it out and start to release the toxins of anger and fear and doubt and unbelief and hurt and rejection and pain and all those things that mm. the enemy loves to pollute our lives with in order to harden our hearts, to imprison our very soul. Uh, to think that we're keeping ourselves protected, um, but actually we're just uh, unfortunately enslaving ourselves. And so, Father, would you release us from that? Would you just one by one take the bricks off our heart and allow us to experience life? Yes, we still might get hurt, and yes, we still might experience rejection. But, Father, when we know that the one who is our maker, the one who is our father, the one who is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who has the answer, the remedy, the cure for all things broken, loves us, adores us, provides for us, shields us, protects us, sings songs of victory over us, dances with us. When we know that you're there with us, Lord God, near us, wrapped your arms around us, it's okay when man rejects us. It's okay <laughs> when man has to leave us. It's okay when man talks behind our back. It's going to hurt, but it's not going to pierce me. It's not going to knock me down anymore because I know that you've got a greater plan. Uh, greater is you who is in me than the one who is of the world. And we just love that verse, Lord God. And I pray that that just is stamped uh, permanent ink in the fabric of our being uh, about you, Lord God. And so today, do what you do so well that we can't do. Tara and I can't do it, but you can. And so we're excited to watch what you have to unfold this morning. We love you. Thank you for this beautiful, precious group. I pray that every person right now feels seen. Yes. They don't feel like... Well, I'm just watching this on my phone and no one really sees me. No, you're seen yes. by your Father. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, only you can divinely uh, or orchestrate that known factor uh, in, in our hearts. So thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you for your tenderness. There's no words to describe how incredibly glorious and beautiful you are. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Mm. Okay, girl, say it. Let's go. Do you know what I love when I watch um, Graham Cook um, every so often? He kisses his Bible. Aww. He thinks it's so glorious. You, you reminded me of him when you just did that. He does he do does. that. I never really realized It's so that, adorable. He... I'm like, yes. Aww. I just love it. It's like that type it's of so admiration cute. for the word he shows. Um, and I just felt like kissing my Bible after I listened to you pray. Aww. So we are in James 2.15. 2, yes. Yeah, so, and then I looked at you and I said, what's you doing? <laughs> Why are we only doing like five words? Everyone's it's thinking that right exactly now. Exactly mm -hmm. connected to a conjunction, students. Ooh. The word end. And we are not combining 15 and 16. No, we're, we're not. not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We, we dare not. We dare not. No, because uh, do, you, do you remember uh, over the break, I think it was, I was um, watching different YouTubes, or I wanted to learn about the making of the Bible. Yes. Was that not neat? That was fascinating. Thanks for sending that. I don't even know what it was, but I just Googled it probably through YouTube, and I yeah. said, I want to know about literally the making and the history of this book. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. Well, you sent me a couple you of them. You won't disappoint. Really good. I watched four or five, and I sent this one, one or two, that were my faves. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. We won't get into that right now, but it gave me an appreciation for the for a for God through a human to write the verse numbers next to each there's a purpose there that's my whole point yes it taught point. me to pay attention to the purpose of each verse mm -hmm. and we're in 15 not 15 and 16 mm -hmm. just 15 i cannot wait to hear me ditto I want you let's to read it can you read yours yeah. i sure can uh, so just 15 says so let me just be careful if you just jumped on. It's James chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Suppose you see a brother or sister who needs food or clothing. That's it. What's yours say? Mine says, suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, period. Of course. Ooh, this is going to be good. Because the word need... Oh, like look at how many times I circled it. The word need I didn't even was like circle that one. pop because you didn't have it. That's why. <laughs> I'm looking for it. You had. Say it again. It has an, that you see a brother or sister that has no food. That or has no food. Even in that, it's like God speaking to you in a special mm. way. Through. Oh, mm -mm, I can't wait. I cannot wait. So tell me. Yeah. Tell me what you got from it. Um. Oh. <laughs> Okay. This is our first time. <laughs> right. Yeah, go for right. it. I'd well, love to follow your lead. Immediately, I was thinking of, um, uh, there's, a, there's a theme that kind of runs throughout the Word of God, and it has to do with these two things that James is actually mentioning here, and it has to do with our daily bread, mm -hmm. our food, and our clothing. And I know here that James is oftentimes talking about the practicality of, of essential needs, and he's, he's driving that home. It's really mm -hmm. important to him. It should be important to us as Christians that we are recognizing that there's needs in our community. There's needs in this world of people that don't have the essential ingredients mm -hmm. of life that they need to have and that we're supposed to share amongst one another. And, um, but immediately I started to see, because it, it's the seeing part is what I, was what I saw. Like the what? The seeing part where it says, um, Oh, see them. Yeah. See, suppose you have a brother or sister without clothes and daily food. So for me, mm. God was saying, you have to see that. Mm. You have to see that there's brothers and sisters that don't <clears throat> have food and don't have clothing. And, and I remember oh. when I started to, to really begin this intimate walk with, with God from my personal life. And it was, you know, that story of Paul on the road to Damascus, and he literally was blinded. And then mm. remember, he had like these scales that were, like fell from his eyes type of thing. And I remember there was a time that as I was getting healing, uh, there was an intimacy that was happening between me and Jesus. That was the healing factor. Mm. He would, there was intimacy for the first time. And remember, intimacy just means into me, see. So for the first time, I was allowing someone to see into me because I used to be very self-protected, self-preservation. The walls were up. I really don't want you to see all of me because if you see all of me, there's that very big chance, not small, but big mm. chance, you're probably going to reject me because that which you see, you're not really going to like. That's the lie that I believe pretty much my whole life mm. so if I can just make sure that you never really see me and I put out what I only want you to see 
um, then I'm safe. But when I had this relationship with God and he's like, there can't be intimacy when there's a barrier there. I need to be able to see into you, Joy. And little by little, he unmasked me. The Damascus is un demask. He unmasked me. He allowed me to see things before he saw into me in a way that I had never been seen into and I could see into him. And then when I went out to this world, intimacy allows you to be able to see with your eyes and be able to see that wow. there's needs around you. And I started to see that there's there's spiritual needs, not just practical needs. Yes, yes, I started to see more um, practical needs, but I also started to see that people were needing daily bread at a, at a spiritual level. And we'll get into what that even means. Mm. And then they also needed clothing at a spiritual le level. And, and it was heavy and it was hard sometimes. And that's why God says, I, I don't want you to wear that. I want you to see people, the need that this world has, and then bring that to me. Al allow yourself to recognize what a gift that I've been given, that I can be a prayer warrior, that I can, mm -hmm. I can be one that sees a need in somebody, and I, I don't have to fix it, but I can bring it to you, Father, who can fix it, yes. who can be the remedy wow. to their spiritual depravity. And depravity is probably the right word. And so the intimacy was really the connection for, for me on that one. Um, but I, real quick, I have a story mm, I want to share. Please. When I was, again, uh, this is probably about 13 years ago. And um, I was putting my uh, two, I had, a, I had a newborn, and then I had like a one-year-old, and I had two like toddlers. And I was putting them into our back seat of our car. And this is kind of like when we had those TVs on the back seats of the car oh, yeah. that you could buy and you could Velcro them. And it was like mm -hmm. a big deal. These kids, you know, these. <laughs> so I'm putting my kids, and they're come. My kids are all just having a day. Like the baby's crying. The two kids are complaining. They've got like, you know, um, some Disney movie playing. They got everything they could need. They got their new shoes on. It's summer, and we're supposed to go to Betsy McDaniel's house for Yay. a play date. <laughs> And I'm getting so frustrated because all they're doing is complaining, all they're doing is bickering with one another, and they've got everything that they could, could want. And all of a sudden, for some reason, as I'm in my garage and I haven't even backed my car out yet, I started to remember that just behind me, because I used to run, and I used to run um, a few miles behind me, there's this one area behind us, and it, it, it is legitimately terribly run by a landlord. And he, mm. he's, he's, he has this apartment that he um, rents out. And, and it's, I've heard through just Rumorville that it's, it's really horrific. Wow. He makes people live in these conditions. It's terrible. And I know there's beautiful children that live there, beautiful families that live there. And this man does not keep it up. It's mm. awful living conditions. And it's literally behind my neighborhood. And I run by it. Uh, I used to run by it a lot. And um, I'm, I have my hands on the wheel. And I heard the Lord go, take your children through that street that you mm -hmm. run every day. And so before I did that, I unbuckled all my kids and I said, find your favorite toys, find, find um, your favorite things. We're gonna give them to kids who don't have those. And they were kind of like, <laughs> I said, no, 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 this isn't an option. Get some of your stuff, your overabundance of your stuff, and we're gonna <clears> take <throat> a little ride. We're gonna take a little field trip before we go on your play date with your TV mm -hmm. in your nice car mm -hmm. that has air condition. Grab your stuff. And I mean, I was just like, I was getting so fueled up, so we get they get all their stuff, and they're actually starting to get excited. And Faith's like, Mom, I'm going to give her this Barbie doll. And Shay's like, Mom, I'm going to give them this truck. And they really started mm -hmm. to get excited. And so it wasn't the point about even giving it. It was about the heart posture of my own children needing to see that they have an abundance of too much that we want to give. So I drive them over, turn the Disney movie off. I drive them over to the street. And we all got out, and literally... My daughter wrote this little thing said free and we put all the toys just right there in the front of this Aww. apartment complex and um, and they just found such so pure delight mm. in being able to give but this is what I'm this is what I'm referring to here when we got into the car I buckled my kids back in and they're smiling I said doesn't you know this is this is how God works in our lives and I'm trying to give them a life a life lesson on this you know like this is what he does for us he sees mm -hmm. our need and he gives to us mm -hmm. he sees our need and he gives from the overabundance the spiritual blessing that he has for us this is just a direct yes. representation this isn't because you you're better than them and they're less than you no 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 mm -hmm. no we are on the same and one day they're gonna see what you did and then they're gonna pass it on and then they're gonna pass it on whether it's practical or spiritual or emotional or whatever it might be and then my son I'll never forget this, Tara. Shay's got these, my little four-year-old at the time, he's got these brand new red Crocs. Remember when Crocs were really mm -hmm. in and they were brand new and you could buy those little gadgets that went in the holes? Yep. They weren't cheap. And he looks down and he goes, Mom, I want them to have my shoes. Oh. I'm like, 
No, I'm thinking to myself, I just bought you these <laughs> shoes yesterday. No, not those. No, not the <laughs> shoes. Get the truck. <laughs> not the shoes. And he's like, Mommy, I, I want them to have my shoes. Mm. And I'll never forget it. And I unbuckled him and I grabbed his little hand. And he was so proud and mm. so excited. <clears throat> and I thought, these shoes are probably just going to be like, tossed out left to the curb but it doesn't matter because it's not about that and he puts his shoes right there on the mm. front yard of this place and I just remember walking away and I'm holding his hand and I'm looking back and I see those two little red crocs just sitting there you know and I'm thinking this is how God works yeah. and I've thought about this story for so many years and I don't know if I've ever shared this story publicly it's my probably my first time but God put it on my heart last night that when we have a need God not only meets that need mm -hmm. but then he gives us the shoes as well Right? The unexpected that we don't even know we don't even know we have. And that's oftentimes like the what, what James is saying here when it comes to the clothing and it comes to our, our daily bread. And and again, you know, I'll know that I'm in Genesis and Exodus. And so in Genesis it in Exodus it talks about mm -hmm. God giving um, the Israelites who left slavery, who left bondage, left their past life, left the the um, just their wayward life of living, let's say, for your for your own everyday life. And they're walking into the wilderness, they're on their way to the promised land, and they're hungry, right? Mm -hmm. And God goes, I'm gonna supply you with daily bread. Right. As James said here, daily bread. I'm gonna provide that for you. And, um, and so what he would do is every day, they would be able to collect, it's like this, it almost looked like the snow here. And they would wake up every day, and it was this, yeah. it was like this, um, like this thin, crisp stuff that tasted like honey. It tasted so gorgeously delicious. Mm. And, um, and yet they called it manna because manna, the definition of manna is what is it? What is this? <laughs> you know, and sometimes in our life, and I just want to stop on that because we, in first, well, first of all, manna too, remember, they had to go out and get the manna. They had to go out and get their <clears> daily <throat> bread. And if they collected too much of it and tried to store it for tomorrow, it actually had maggots the next day, it said. It was only enough for that day, and he never forgot to supply them for that day. He gave them six days worth, and on the sixth day, he doubled the portion. So on the seventh day, they didn't even have to go out and get it. Mm. But I was thinking about this. He said, and in in Jesus taught us how to pray. He had a Lord's Prayer, and he's like, and, and give us our our daily bread, our daily bread, our daily manna, just for today. Because if I store too much and I don't go out tomorrow, it's going to have maggots. It's already old. And um, the daily bread, they had to actually, Tara, they had to get up. They had to go out. They had to grab hold of it. They had to you know, make a move to get their daily bread. And that's mm. what Jesus is saying in this prayer. That's what James is saying here. We have to get up every day. We have to go step out. We have to go mm. grab that daily bread. And there's going to be times that we're not going to recognize that it's even our daily bread. Because manna means what is it? Mm. They could have just been like, oh, this is just flakes that just you know fell from the clouds. But they recognize, you know what, maybe, just maybe, this thing that I don't even recognize is, a, is the very hand of God giving to me. It's actually my daily bread. Maybe, just maybe, this isn't just an ordinary Bible study. Yes. Maybe, just maybe, this is my daily bread. That I, I'm like, what is this? What is this thing coming across my Facebook feed? What, what is this that I thought was just a book that collected dust and, you know, was just a wait for, for some other books? What is this? Could this be my daily bread? And it's not enough to be able to consume it just for today and I'm good for the next month because tomorrow it is going to have some maggots on it. I need to have it fresh and new Ooh. every day. I need to be able to go up and open it and wake up and be fed my daily bread. So I'm going to stop on the daily bread because I didn't get to the clothing part. But I think the daily bread is so essential. Mm -mm. I want to just stop for a moment, and I really want to hear what the Lord put on your heart too. Oh, but um, I want to—I just want to emphasize. God, I that. want to keep receiving from my overflow here. Yeah, but, you sure you want to? Yeah, yeah. Golly. Okay, I just love how it connects, and I will do the best I can with my time with the Lord as I go back in my journal. And I love when there's pictures in Tara's journal because you know you're in for something good. I don't know what I am going to share today because he has me, and all of us, just staying at suppose you see. I love how the word see popped out to your heart. Like what you just yeah. shared because of the word see. Yeah. You see what, that is what, mm -mm, Okay. Suppose you see a brother or sister who needs 
food or clothing. Mm -hmm. So you, you and I both um, saw some of the same things. Um, so when I started and I just was praying and I just wanted to see what, what it is that, right, that intimacy. I want that intimacy with God. I say this all the time. We say this all the time. What do I need to receive today mm -hmm. so that it can flow through you? that heaven can be magnified, heaven can be increased today. Mm -hmm. That's it, heaven to be increased today wow. through me. Show me as he did joy from the word see plus the other words, but like it just, if we just surrender our heart as you prayed. So mm -hmm. then I have a trust. Then I have a trust that whatever it is that I'm experiencing, I can just trust, I can have faith that I'm receiving exactly what it is I need to receive. Mm. So as I'm in this verse with God, with the Holy Spirit, the living, breathing, active, mm. alive God, what do you want me to know about this scripture? I ask him. And he says, notice how it's an example of the last um, day. Mm -hmm. So it says, it brings me back to verse 14. Dear brothers and sisters, what's the use of saying you have faith if you don't prove it by your actions? Okay, that, that won't save anyone. So he then goes on, James goes on to say, so suppose you see, right? So then it begged me to go back to, um, where did I write this in my journaling? It begged me to write down, um, Okay, so this following what James is saying, I have faith. This is, I'm just, I'm just formatting chapter, or verse 14 and 15. In my journal, I wrote, so I'm saying I have faith. Mm -hmm. And then I'm saying, what am I having faith in? I'm, and this is a little repeat from yesterday, but that's the point. It ushers in to the next day, to the next, it has it a does. flow of power from one day to the next day to the next day. That's what the scripture does. That's what this Bible, it's just magnificent. So it reminded me, all right, so here's the scenario, y'all, right? I have a faith, and what's the faith in? What is the source, ultimately? What am, what am I saying I have a faith in? I have a faith in the power of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what 14 Ooh. is saying. I wanted also to have God take my sweet little spaghetti brain and whoo, Narrow it down to one powerful statement. I love that statement. You have the faith in the power of God. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you, what are we having faith in? What's the capital S source? Yeah. What are we plugging into every morning that you're talking about? Yeah. To get that manna, to get like, well, what is that? Sometimes we show up and we're like, we can't even organize our thoughts because nice. we're like, it, what is that? What is that? How do we use words to explain? How do we use human words to be like, I did feel that this morning. I'm, I'm preaching all the way here in my car. If people driving by me, they I, I have no idea what they thought, but I am just going out in the car because it's been, like, they're probably like, what is that in my car? I like, love what that. is that? Making a connection to what you're saying. I love it. So this morning, I'm plugging into a capital S source of the power of Jesus. I have faith in the power of Jesus. But do nothing with that power, it doesn't help anyone. Hmm. That's, that's what yesterday and today, that's what verse 14 and 15 is saying mm -hmm. to me. That I, have, I, I love you, Jesus. I am choosing you. You are my Lord and Savior. You saved me. I don't even know. What is that? What, what did you do in my life? And I can try to write it down and try to make sense of it, but I have a faith in the power of Jesus, but I'm not going to do anything with it. And that doesn't help me, and that doesn't help anyone who's going to be in my presence the rest of that day. So it says, then it goes, okay, so let's take this lack of power that you, you say you have, you have faith in the power of Jesus. So when you say that, that means the power is in you. So not only am I saying I have faith in the power of Jesus, now that power is in me, but I do nothing with that power. And then suppose you see a fellow believer 
who also believes in the power of Jesus and happens to be in need, and I'll just get to the point because she did a great job, in an essential element of food and clothing, which I know through my time reading the Bible, we're never, ever, ever going to be without the essentials. Mm -hmm. If God has us in this day, puts breath in our lungs today, he will never forsake us. He will never give us, if he, what is it, clothes the flowers and he uh, feeds the birds, if he takes care of nature, he takes care of me. Do we believe that? My earrings are like, they're incredible. Okay, so yes, I'm ADD. Hang in there with me. Um, so you see a fellow believer who is in need. And as what Joy said, I ultimately got it down to the, to the most basic spiritual need. Mm -hmm. So let's go through the circuit again. I have faith in the power of Jesus. That faith is in me because God is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. I got that power in me and I'm not gonna do anything with it. And so suppose I see someone, I see a fellow believer who also should have the power in them and for whatever reason isn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. They're in need of something because that's what my Bible says. It's in need of something. My brother and sister who believes in the power of Jesus has, who believes in the power of Jesus mm -hmm. also has a need. Mm -hmm. But I show up and we meet and I have this power and I'm not shining it. I'm not doing anything with it. And then they have a need and there's nothing. Hmm. It falls flat. And he just said like, how, how often are we going to do that? Hmm. And, and so I just, I just hung out only in scripture because my brain wants to go to the outliers. It wants to say, well, what about this circumstance? And well, what, what, how, how does it fit this circumstance? Well, what about this? And what about this time? And I just, that's not surrendering. That's wanting answers. Hmm. I want to stay in the, what is it? Mm. I want to stay in that. Thank you, Joy, for that. I want to stay in, that's why it's faith. Mm. Because we're going to have a lot of what is it. <laughs> we're going to have days and days and years and decades of, what, 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 what is it? What is that power that you speak of? Oh, no, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's our God as a provider. That's what that is that flows through me. And then he says to me, or I, 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 I look at it, and I used to be the need. I used to be the answer to people's need. Mm. Because of my lack, I felt better when I could serve others. I felt better when I was the capital S source. Mm. So when I looked at this mm. and, ooh, someone needs something? Mm. Oh, yeah. This is where I shine. <laughs> This is where I shine. People need something. I'll, I'll be there for you. This is where the accent and the sassiness comes out. This is what I come out. from. This is where these earrings, this is why God must have chosen these earrings today because I'm going to hypnotize you. I'm going to be the capital S source for so the true. thing that you need because mm -hmm. I got myself an education now and I can tell you whatever it is. And if, you, if I don't have the answer, I will do everything in my power. I'll stay up till three o'clock in the morning to get that answer mm -hmm. for you. I will be your source. I will be your capital S source. I will fill that need. I used to see these people in the world and I would, oh, I can shine now. I have a purpose. My children need me. Joy, the barn. Well, this isn't even the season. I can't even use these examples today. I'm gonna go back in, in history because this is when I acted a fool and I was the source. You want food? I'll give you food. Oh, you need a donation? I'll write a check. And it does go in. Oh, no, I'm not even gonna go there. This is where it gets spaghetti-like. You, you, you want to turn this elementary school around? I am your girl. I will give up everything I have to give literal food and clothing, us teachers and principal would say. If a child needed something, we didn't only give them an education, but we bent over backwards to give food and clothing, and we gave up everything we had plus some. We deprived ourselves, we depleted ourselves because we were the ultimate source. Have you ever given that way? Mm. Have you ever saw someone in need and said, oh yeah, you're, you're, I'm, I'm to write a check. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm to tithe because the church needs it. Mm. I am to give because we're supposed to be doing tithings and offerings. I'm going to go ahead and offer this. My, I, you know, I, I want this love connection, so I'm going to get. And then I just had this awakening over the years. You are not people's capital S source. Mm -hmm. You are a lowercase s source. And if you really want to clothe and feed them the way that they need, and you don't even, no one will really know what it is that they need, mm -hmm. except for the capital S source, our God, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who what has the power where it starts to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so if we see, if suppose you see a brother or sister who's in need, mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. will tell us what that need, how, if, I, if I'm even supposed to be the one to meet that need, mm -hmm. even if it's God shining through me. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I too have some more, I just wanna pause here as well. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous when we spend time, personal mm -hmm. time in the Bible, letting it speak to us mm -hmm. in a remembrance of, oh, do you remember how you used to act like the source of power in people's lives? Mm -hmm. And now, I am your source mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And then if, suppose, I put someone in your path mm -hmm. for you to see, never again will you serve from a place of it's coming from me. Mm. It's coming from God. It's coming from Jesus. It's coming from the ultimate power. Mm. It's amazing. Wow. I mean, there's so much to be said on that because, yes, we're still supposed to be you know, obviously, we, we, God shows us people that are in need and he enables us to be in a position, whether it's financially, mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually, you know, any, any way to be able to provide for them. But I love, I love, we're going back to this pause button again, mm -hmm. you know, it's like mm -hmm. before that need, okay, check my own heart. Am I, mm -hmm. am I trying, is it selfish ambition that I want to give to you so that I feel like I'm worth something? I feel like, or am I truly giving to you? Cause I first have just paused and said, mm -hmm. Lord, they have a need. I see it. I know I see their need, mm. but only you can tell me that they need the shoes too. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pray before I just go ahead and write the check or before I just go give because I know you want me to do that, but then I know you have something extra. So tell me, what are they going through? Tell me, what are they walking through? Tell me what I'm not seeing. Mm -hmm. And there are times, I'm so grateful sometimes people didn't come through for me yes. in an emotional way because mm -hmm. God was like, if Joy, if they kept peeling you off the floor, you would have never come found me because it was in when I, my desperation, it was in when I hit rock bottom and no one, no human being kept saving mm -hmm. me that I finally was like, Lord, you're the only one. And he's like, I've been the only one the whole time. So there are times that God's, that you see a need and you're like, no, that person fell. And God goes, I know, I got this, I got this. And then there's going to be times he's going to be like, no, Joy, put out your hand and grab them. Mm. Be me in flesh. Yes. We don't know what that is, but you know what? That's the beautiful yes. thing of having this Holy Spirit inspired, mm. ignited, passion filled walk with Jesus Christ. And it doesn't mean like, well, I just started walking with him today. That's enough. Exactly. I just started walking with him a minute ago. That's yeah. enough. <laughs> just be in constant prayer. That's why it says, mm. don't worry about anything, but pray about yes, everything. 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 And I, you know, she does that. I, I, I don't do that enough. I don't pray about everything. And, and it, it's like... It, I think sometimes in our Western Christian culture, we've kind of trained each other not to. We're like, well, there's a need, just meet it. And God's like, I know that seems right, but, and, and I want you to meet that need because I want to meet their need and then give them the shoes. So pray, please just talk to me, pray with me. Hmm. Um, but I did want to go into real quick because it please. started to make me smile when he said, <laughs> James, like, okay, I want you to give them the daily manna. What is this? And I want you to also um, clothe them. Mm -hmm. I, if they, they're in need of clothing, well, both clothing and um, the daily bread mm -hmm. is, is a woven thread throughout the whole word of God. And I started to just think on my couch yesterday of all the areas in the scriptures I've read about clothing. So just bear with me because I want to do church with you for a moment. But I also want to just remind us all how God truly is the God that desires to give us our essentials yes. spiritually, but and not just practically. Yeah. And I started to think about in Isaiah 61.10 where Isaiah says, and he's talking to all of us, and he's like, you know what? Yes, I got clothes on my back. I got clothes on my chest. I got shoes on my feet. But God has clothed me with garments of salvation. But when I walk out this door today, God is clothing me with this reminder that I've been saved. Mm -hmm. I am not enslaved. 
I am not imprisoned to the enemy's strongholds. I am not imprisoned and I am not addicted anymore to this very thing that wants to take me down. Yes, it might be having tr me trip up a little bit right now, but no, it does not have authority in my life and it cannot imprison me and throw away the key. Nope, right. nope, and nope. And so we wear this garment that reminds the enemy, it reminds ourselves. It's a garment of identity that I am saved, a garment of salvation. He's covered me with his robe of mm. righteousness. Okay, we walk out the door, we got a robe of righteousness. Righteousness says in the book of Romans and throughout the whole word, you can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't work your way for it. Righteousness just means faith. I am believing. I put in a stake mm. in the ground in the power of God. You are? Well, guess what? You've got a robe of righteous. Girl, you are righteous. You believe that? You are righteous. And then, then I went to, um, there's, this, there's this, in Luke 8, 35, there's this naked, crazy, insane man who's living in the graveyard's terror. He's got crazy strength. Um, that people can't even keep him like, you know, ch shackled. And Jesus comes in and he frees this man from this demonic force that was in him. And the next, the next line you see is that this man, after he's been touched and healed by the very tender, you know, just soft, warm hand of Jesus mm -hmm. himself, right? That healing hand. The next sentence says this crazy, once insane man is sitting there calmly, sane, and fully clothed. Who can like who gave him the clothes? Yes. Right. No one gave him clothes yeah. because they're spiritual clothes. He's got his identity now. He's no longer insane. His emotions no longer dictate his reality. He has been touched by the very gracious, gorgeous, glorious hand mm. of God. And he is fully clothed. And then it reminded me of Adam and Eve right from the beginning, right? We know the story. And maybe not. If you haven't, better yet, go to Genesis today when you get off here because it's fascinating. And that shame enters the picture. And shame, ugh, shame will clothe you with, with, with dirt, with mud, with muck, you name it. And um, God's like, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You're not clothing my daughter in that stuff. And he, he sacrifices an animal and he clothes Adam and Eve, the first person that he clothes, he clothes them with this animal skin. Close them after they've been shamed, saying, no, 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 I'm putting clothes on you that Isaiah spoke about, that it's the garment of salvation, that it's the robe of righteousness. And then um, Jeshua, it's in the book of um, Zechariah. Ze it's the only, it's only written document of really having a direct depiction, a picture of what it's like when Satan is accusing us. And this man of God named Joshua or Jeshua, mm -hmm. whatever translation mm -hmm. you use, he's standing there in front of Satan. And Satan, it says, is accusing him from head to toe. Look at you. Mm. Who do you think you are? Oh, you think God loves you? Oh, you've done this. Oh, don't you remember what you did 13 years ago? Oh, don't you remember that very thing that you haven't told another human being that you're gonna take to the grave? Oh, look at you. you. God could not love you. And he is accusing him one after another, after another, after another, and then there's God right there. <laughs> and he stops Satan dead in his tracks. It's exactly how he works in our life. And he sees the filthy clothing that every time Satan makes an accusation on Jeshua, he puts another piece of, of mud clothing on Jeshua. And then he accuses him again and he puts another layer of mud, um, a cloak and a, and a robe on him. And then God steps right in and he goes, oh, no, 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 no. And he says to his, like, his angel that's standing there, like his servant, he's like, take that mud off him. Take those dirty, filthy clothes off him, it says. And he says, now put on this beautiful, fine, white robe. Just, just put this on, Jeshua, because this accuser, he's mm -hmm. full of lies. This accuser, this doesn't belong here. Yeah, that might be a fact that happened, but that's no longer the truth, because truth overrides facts every single time. Mm. And, um, and then just this morning, I'm reading about Aaron and, 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 and the book of Exodus, and uh, I'm not going to get into it, but it's all about God clothing them in beautiful and glorious clothes, because it's not practical clothes, it's our identity, that you are beautiful, that you are glorious, that you are you have a, a garment of salvation, that you have the robe of righteousness. And um, then the last one, I'm gonna end it here, the prodigal son. This boy had wandered off, this boy had slept with hookers, this boy found himself with no money left, he's literally in a pig pen, he literally has mud and poop up to his knees, and he's like, I'm gonna go back home to my father, which is supposed to be God himself. And he comes back home and, and he's done the unthinkable. He's done the worst. He has dug a pit for himself and he does not deserve any grace. He does not deserve any love. He does not deserve anything and he knows it. And as he's coming and he's approaching his glorious father, pure father, holy father, good father, in his muck, in, his, in, in those, those items of clothing that Satan has cloaked him in, right, that we found out in Joshua's life. 
the same thing. He comes to his father, and uh, his father goes, get these dirty rags off you. And he puts a new garment on him, a garment of righteousness, a garment of salvation. And then he does something so interesting here. He not only gives what it looks like he needed to be given because his clothes were a mess, so the father obviously put new clothes on him. But then he says, and get my son some new sandals. Remind you of that story we started with today? Mm. Get my son some new sandals. And he puts the new shoes on to his son because it's only after you've been given undeserved grace, undeserved mercy, undeserved love, can you put those shoes on that allow you, and it says in Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings the good news. We can only go and deliver this good news. We can only go and deliver God's fame. We can only mm-hmm. go and, just, and spread his power. That's right. That's supposed to be in our belief system. Mm-hmm. That's supposed to be that he desires for us to have in our belief system to be anchored into. We can only do that after we have experienced this undeserved, unmerited, make mm. no sense, I, I, don't, I don't deserve this type of grace. Hmm. Only then can you put those shoes on and then you go out onto this world because you don't care anymore what people are going to say behind your back. You don't care if you think you're, they think you're crazy. You don't care because yes. you just received something that you didn't deserve. Only one source could, give, could love like that. It's the same love that this boy went looking for in the hookers. This boy went looking for in the money. This boy went looking for, that joy went looking for in the world Mm -hmm. and came up empty. And then when I finally went home to my father and that was the very thing I went out in the world looking for, Mm -hmm. you better believe I'm going to put on those little red crocs that are waiting for me in front of my home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put those red crocs on. I'm going to go take those little feet of mine. I'm going to go share the word of God. Mm -hmm. Is it hard? Yes, sometimes it is. Are people going to say some things about you that are not true? Yes, yeah, sometimes they just don't know your heart. But you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because I received this crazy love that has made me whole, that has, that has now taken every little block that I put up to make me self-protected and strong and fierce and independent and t- tore it all down and set me free. That's what God does when you allow yourself to eat that manna. What is this? And allow yourself to be clothed in this beautiful clothes that he has waiting for us every single day. Clothes. That word he gave me a long time, a few years ago, is adorned, right? I brought that up. I didn't even think of that word today. He adorns us. And I just am feeling the nudge of the Spirit just really offer all of us an opportunity to pause for a minute. And think about what, mm-hmm. That's not pause. New. I think I found, you know how I we're talking about the words for like the year? Or the pause. word for the day? And you said, let's not do a word for the year. Let's do a word for the day. Mm. Mine has been paused for the it last has. few days. It right? really has. And that is because that's where we sense, that's where we get reconnected with his Holy Spirit, with this power yes. that we're talking about that is easily stolen from us mm. by the thief. Uh, we can leave our Bible time. For me, leaving my home office and go into the kitchen and I can have what I felt like just this powerful jolt of just this awesome from the capital S source, no other source. And then all of a sudden life hits and, and it's in the pause and, and I'm offering that right now. Joy and I are offering that right now. I have this immense heaviness in a good way because I know my father, I don't need to wear this heaviness. Mm. But I can name it and I can say, I feel like, and today is a different day, isn't it? You fill in the blank why today is a different day or what's going on in a nation or what's going on in the world or where you're watching from, not even in America. You don't even possibly know what is going on. And there's just this Mm -hmm. heaviness maybe. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting words to it in this pause moment. Where do you need that manna? Where do you need that, that clothing from, the, from our Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is our, we are serving the Lord, our Lord, where we get, not only do we see the power of Jesus, it is given to us freely. Mm-hmm. It's a gift. It's a free gift. But Jesus used his blood to pay for that gift. Wow. So nothing is free. But it was for me, it was for you, it was for the nearly 8 billion people, however many billion now, 8 billion people on this planet. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us 
to give credit where credit is due, that my life is given by God. God is the master behind it all who gave us this mm -hmm. free gift that all we have to do is have faith in. And then we get this power. It's not something that is in our God that the God is the one with the power. It's this gift that we then, re it's a back and forth personal relationship of this powerful exchange. But do you feel so naked and exposed right now? Do you feel so without something right now? Do you feel like you are starving for something right now? Don't forget the source that clothes you, that fills you up, that will give you that thing that you feel that you don't have or that you've never had because we didn't realize that we're going into the world, we enter into the world and our power is our parents. Our power is in our, our income. Our power is in what our parents or our bosses say about us. Our power is in our job. The power is in if joy agrees with me or not, or if we're in good standing or not. The power is in if the power virtually works, literal electronic power. Where are we going in this world, even if we say we're Christians since 40 years, 60 years? But we didn't realize that we were going, we were, the proof of the power was in our circumstance. Mm -hmm. When this and this and this is good, well, then I'm a powerful person. But when this and this, this can be good, but if this and this mm -hmm. isn't, and this is good, and this is good, but this isn't good, my power mm, is only that much. We're searching the world for this source. Hmm. And we're so afraid to surrender to the person who made us to begin with, to the source, to the power. Hmm. And I did have like a, a science example. This is what she's looking at. I'm not going to bring it up. I knew it. I knew this was just for me this morning. Really? But I, but it's or for all of us for tomorrow. the rest of the, yeah, the rest of chapter two. It's just this scientific, true example here that is tangible, that, he, that God has given us, that he is the source. But we just plug into the wrong sources. We have faith in the wrong sources. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you say you're a believer and you say that you've given your life to Lord Jesus Christ. But is he leading it? Is he actually the source? Mm -hmm. Or are we getting that entangled in, in choosing which source we're choosing? Because we can't choose both. Mm -hmm. I can't have the power in my job and the power is in Jesus. That doesn't, that's not how it goes. Mm -hmm. The power isn't in me and in Jesus. That's not how it goes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that's why I need to dig in deeper for myself. I need to have more conversation with people. I want to talk about this more. Yeah. And I want to, I love, I want to just piggyback on that and then we'll end it. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to keep going back to what you're saying and then going back to what manna actually meant as what is it. Maybe it's in your life right now where you're saying, well, God hasn't shown up for me. Well, God's not providing that clothing and that, that spiritual food for me. So I, I'm having to find power in my job. I'm having to find power in a different source. Or I'm having, is it just possible that maybe our expectations of how that bread is going to look like in our mm. life actually isn't going to show up looking like bread, but it's going to show up looking like manna. And we have to go up to and go, what is it? Is it possible that the very thing that I look back in my life and I recognize that God provided for me every day, that I just walked over it, I bypassed it. I didn't even recognize that that was the very right. bread that was going to feed my mm -hmm. soul, that was going to give me life. What is it? So I really want to encourage you all, when you get off this, if you could take some time to open up your journal and even just write that on the top. That's what I did today. And I just yeah. wrote, what is it? <laughs> what is it, Lord, that you've been providing for me day in and day out and day in and day out? It's a straight up miracle. And I've just been walking over it. I haven't even been seeing it because I can't see until I have intimacy with you. So Lord, let me start having intimacy with you where I let you see into me in a way 
that maybe I don't let people see into me because I'm afraid they're going to reject me, Lord God, but you won't ever reject me. You made me. You know everything about me. And little by little, you're going to start to have a visual where you can see the very things that you normally couldn't see before. And the what, what is it that's all right. of a sudden is going to start to have an answer and you're going to start to see it mm. in a way that you go, that's been here every day yes. of my life. The manna is here yes. and it is enough for today. Yes. Wow. Wow. So good. It's Hello. Great stuff. Hello. And I do hope you show, share well. the uh, science experience. <laughs> he has me as a science nerd nowadays. Oh, all right. Let's, let's close in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power that is in me because I have chosen you as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. That power saves, doesn't it? It saves, it saves, it saves. Fill in the blank as to what it saves. Mm -hmm. It saves. Mm -hmm. You took the sting out of death. It has set us free. We have nothing to fear. Yes, it is about others. Yes, it is about seeing others. But oh my goodness, if we can't see you for mm -hmm. your truth, seeing others and helping others is dull. Mm -hmm. It's powerless. It's temporary support. I dare not. I dare not give another penny. I dare not give another sandwich. I dare not give another sweater or a winter coat. I dare not unless I have been clothed in the truth and in the power of what Jesus first did for me and how you, Jesus, clothed me and you feed me, God. I want to know that truth today. I got to know that truth more today. We hung out today, right, everybody? We, we spent time with the source of power that then works through us so that if we happen to come upon someone who needs something, you, Father, you'll let us know what it is that, not, that won't be a temporary fix, but you'll just orchestrate it just beautifully enough. And guess what? It probably won't make sense to us. It very well may not make sense to the person who needs it. And we'll do it anyway. We will shine your light and exude your power even when it doesn't make sense to us. And then that, that is where transformation, that is what James is saying, saves. That saves your power, feeds and clothes and saves. That's our purpose. Your power through us saving souls. That's our purpose. How you want that to be accomplished? Have your way. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, have your way. And if you don't know this Lord Jesus Christ that we're speaking of, stay with us. Learn about him with us. And when you're ready, just surrender. Give up that weighted vest that you've been carrying and that, that weighted helmet of understanding and trade it for salvation, having a mindset on heaven. And just say, I want that. Whatever it is, I feel like I get it enough to say, I want to surrender my life to Lord Jesus Christ. Have your way. Today is a good day. We're going to see heaven more today than we saw yesterday. And yesterday was a gorgeous day. Have your way, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this power, for the blood that was shed to pay for this free gift for me to use this power. And I pray over all of us that even if it's the power of a little drop, it's going to make a difference. Have your way. We pray all of this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Ooh. All right. I can't wait for tomorrow. 
Enjoy your day. It's going to be a powerful day. Put your stake yes, in the ground is. of what your belief system is in the power of Woo! God. <laughs> yeah. That's good stuff. We're going to keep going. We're going to talk for more and more and more time here.